Well, hello, ladies, gentlemen, children, monkeys of all ages, and fellow caffeine fiends. Um, today we're going to go through some coffee gear and uh, how my quick and dirty method of making AeroPress coffee. I've been promising some uh, coffee content, and it's just been a real monster. And uh, I'm going to talk about beans first, and then we'll get into equipment a little bit, and then I'll show you the quick and dirty. I'm not going to be doing weights and stuff, which is how you really really make the best possible cup of coffee with an AeroPress is to weigh, you know, how many grams of coffee, how many grams of water, know your temperature, know your grind size, all of that. So just finishing up some beans from Trader Joe's, these organic Bolivian blend. A um, little on the dark side for me, but good flavor. Uh, so if you like a dark roast, uh, not a bad way to go. I think it's about 10 bucks for a one pound can, or 14 ounce can, excuse me. Before that was a brand called Intelligentsia that I can't find the bag for. Um, I've been saying, this is how many times I've tried to record coffee content for y'all. Um, <clears throat> so plus one, because I can't find the Intelligentsia bag. But uh, Intelligentsia Organic El Gallo was the, the flavor. Uh, got it at Target, so uh, you can pick it up there. I think it was on sale for just over 10 bucks for uh, probably a 12-ounce bag. That's what most of these are. Uh, very light roast for me. So that one went the other direction. It was supposed to be a medium roast. It tasted very, very light. So uh, if you like grassy notes, uh, that very green coffee flavor, you would probably really like the organic El Gallo. Don't let the medium roast on the bag you it's not a medium roast to me before that caribou blend this is the only one that comes in whole beans from caribou a little on the dark side but good flavor um uh, made a good cup just a little bit i've gotten away from the darker roasts uh I, I, they just started to taste burnt to me when i started using the the aeropress so um so i've, I've kind of moved down to a true medium roast and uh, that's why you'll see a lot of these are medium or uh, medium dark roast. The Duncan original blend, again, one of the only ones I think they, I think this and the or the uh, decaf version of this are the only whole bean that I can find around here. So um, uh, not bad, kind of flat, but uh, the beans, these big, big uh, companies who, who, the quality just isn't there when you start to, to, to make a cup with other beans that are from some smaller roasters and um, companies who are going out and uh, sourcing beans um, in places around the world and you don't always get the same the same beans so you may end up with beans from here one one week and you know a month later it's gonna it's not gonna be around so um, the upshot of that is you tend to get a lot better beans as far as where they were grown, how they were grown, all of that. So smaller companies like this, uh, Ethical Bean Coffee, uh, do a great job. Um, that was a, a fairly good cup that I made from those beans. The uh, whole bean classic medium roast wasn't bad. Um, <clears throat> probably not my favorite overall, but uh, definitely not a bad bean. And I think I got that on sale for right at 10 bucks. Next one, House Blend. This is a Kroger brand. This is their organic line. Um, one of a handful of whole bean coffees that you can find in Kroger around here. Super flat on this one. Um, a little dark, but just very flat flavor. You're not getting a whole lot of the, the fruitiness and stuff like that that uh, you get out of uh, um, some beans. So that's where we're at as far as those. Now... Go to beans typically because you could get them at any Kroger around here. The private selection you've gotten, which is a Kroger brand, I believe, and Pete's Big Bang. This is my go to because you can find this anywhere. Um, and whole bean or ground. Uh, Pete's has a few in whole bean, so bravo, Pete's. Thank you for that. And the Big Bang is actually an amazing bean. Uh, I really, really like this, so it tends to be a part of blends uh if i get something that's a little on the dark side i blend it down with uh with some of the peats or some of the ugandan but the ugandan has gone away um i think it's probably because of the drought that's going on over in kenya uganda and that whole region um hopefully it comes back this is an amazing bean 
the quality of the beans that come out, the, the flavor and everything, there's a lot of cracked beans and stuff like that. So that type of quality um, is typical of, uh, you know, a bagged commercial coffee. The flavor is freaking amazing. Sweet. It doesn't matter what temperature you brew this bean at. Very, very forgiving. Hopefully, private selection, if you're listening, which I doubt you are, please, please, please bring back the Ugandan as quickly as you can. As soon as the, the drought is over there, amazing beans, amazing coffee. And these go on sale for like six bucks. They used to. Uh, six, seven bucks all the time. So uh, 12 ounces of coffee for even, I think, the regular price is 10. Um, still one of the best beans out there if it comes back. Pete's Big Bang, like I said, those two are my go-to. So um, if I open up one of these others that I'm getting ready to show you, and they end up being too dark or kind of flat, they'll get one of those two mixed in. But this is the last bag of Uganda known to exist. They don't carry it anymore, and I loaded up on the last time. They had a sale months ago, and I have been stringing it along. So the beans are getting kind of old, and I uh, need to use those up. But today, I think I'm going to go with the Kahawa. Kahawa? 1893, uh, another Kenyan bean, or another Trader Joe's bean that I got from Uganda. I'm, I'm itching to try that out because it's Ugandan, but uh, I think I'm going to do a side-by-side -side of those two for you guys later. I'm going to go with this Kenyan. Uh, got this at Meyer on sale. Uh, this one on sale right at, I think, 10 bucks. I don't like to pay more than $10 for beans, guys, so uh, if I can get a bag of beans for 10 bucks or less, I'm happy. When I can get them on sale for seven, eight dollars a bag, uh, even better. And Pete's is on sale right now. If you buy five or more, uh, you can get them for I think six ninety nine. So we'll probably be seeing a lot of Pete's around here, but um, you guys won't necessarily. <laughs> uh, but um, I think I'm gonna set everything up, and we're gonna go with the Kahawa. And uh, I'll put the rest of this stuff away and be right back. Okay, so getting everything set up. The first thing I would normally tell you you'll need is a good scale. Um, we're going to be playing by ear today, so I can speed this up. Uh, but the first thing you do when you get an arrow press is you learn your weights and everything. Um, because ratios and being precise is what gets you to your best cup. And then learning to make that cup outdoors has gotten me away from all of those practices. So uh, the next thing you're going to need, obviously, a good cup. Um, some beans. The way I store my beans is in one of these aero vacuum sealing containers. Uh, so after I pour this out, I will fill up a Talenti jar with the beans. Easier to, to work and get into a good grinder. This is key. Um, expect to spend 60 to to $100 on a good grinder. This is actually the most expensive part of this setup. Um, the Aero Press is only about $32, so uh, you can pick that up for about $32. Bucks. The Fellows Prismo I use is about $30, bucks. so you're about $62 bucks there. And then the grinder is, like I said, it's at least that much. So the Time More C that I got here, I believe is... I'll say $65, $70, so about the same price as your AeroPress and Prismo together. And then, uh, like I said, it'll be here, but let's get the Prismo. Now, on my Prismo, I do use a paper filter right along with the standard issue metal filter that comes with it. So it comes with this metal filter that has a gasket on it. That gasket sits down in the channel down there and uh, keeps it from grounds from getting out but uh you will still have some sediment with just the metal filter so if you want a really clean cup go with both paper paper and metal and then uh i'm not gonna put oh those are some good looking beans now look at that nice i'm not seeing a ton of cracked beans but most of those will be down towards the bottom a light color, which tells me it might be a little bit lighter roast than I'm expecting. And those beans are really small, which uh, reminds me a lot of the Kenyan. So, um, from years and years and years of practice, <laughs> I kind of know where I need to be. But uh, 
generally I'm trying to get the beans just below these little red cross members. So uh, if I'm a bean or so short of that, I am generally speaking good. I think I'm right there because these small beans, if I were to pour this out and weigh it, it probably weighs more than the typical 24 grams that I go for in this, even being a little bit shy. So just the nature of small beans from that part of the world. But then uh, I'll do this off camera, but uh, I'm going to grind these beans here. And I have this set on, I uh, backed it off 30 clicks. So to give you an idea of the setting on this particular grinder, it won't necessarily work for yours that way. But uh, in that neighborhood, backed off about 30 clicks. And then uh, I'll put everything in here and I'll be right back. Lightly salted, put a pinch of Himalayan sea salt in there, that pink Himalayan salt in there with uh, my grinds to add mineralization back to the water because I'm on city water. And uh, that's really it. So uh, let's try and figure out how we're going to get this under the camera. Because uh, the next deal is... Um, pow! Coconut sugar, MCT oil, and uh, I'll probably put a little bit of heavy cream in this because uh, it's my first real cup of the day, i.e. meaning not a drinking it black. But uh, I used up the rest, of, the rest of my beans on the last cup, that's why. Um, but that is really it. From here, it's all about timing and uh, the amount of water you're putting into your cup or this. Because I dilute and pre-warm my cup with a little bit of water about 80 milligrams of water, so I'm not trying to tell you what's going on here. And then in here, um, I will put in uh, around 190. I may actually weigh this part, but uh, not today. Um, but uh, we'll come in here around 200, 190 to 200 milligrams of water, and uh, 80 in here, and we'll end up in good shape. But, uh, man, this is going to be tough to... Uh, Tough to squeeze in underneath the camera, but we'll do our best. Okay, so in measuring my water, when I weigh it, I know that I typically want to come up to the upper end of the the bottom uh, part of the handle there. So come up to just the top of the flare on that handle where it meets the cup. Swirl that to... Uh, to get the sugar dissolved in there and start to emulsify that uh, uh, you're gonna be kind of off camera here so I can get this out where it's I can pour water without pouring it onto the camera <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> basically the way this is gonna go and I need to set my timer for I set it for 321 but uh, I am going to pour all the way up to the bottom of this three and uh, I don't do a bloom. The bloom happens after I do a full pour. I don't do a pre-bloom. So uh, if you're familiar with, I, tell you what, I think I can do this off of the, the cup and make it. It's a new Prismo, so I don't have to worry about anything drip, drip, dripping. But uh, start my timer. There we go. So basically I'm going for about a three minute uh, soak. But this first 40 seconds will be, there we go, will be just, uh, this is my bloom. So out in the woods, I'm counting in my head. I'm not using my watch or phone. I'm not using up batteries out there to uh, time my coffee. So I'm just counting, you know, count to 30, count to 40, and, uh, and then turn it loose. So there we go. And now I don't stir, I shake and then swirl. Now we're there. I have to do this on the cup because it frequently lets out a little bit of coffee as I'm trying. A few moments later. Okay. Time is up. Now, slow push. It should take you about 40 to 50 seconds to push this through. It is a new paper filter, so it moves a little faster than that sometimes if I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, which I'm not. But, coffee is on the way! Now, you'll start to hear a hiss. A lot of people stop there. 
If you don't like bitterness in your coffee, I do recommend stopping as soon as you start to hear that hiss. Because if you do like I do and push all the way down until you feel resistance from the grounds, right there, you get a little bit of that foam come out. And that foam is bitterness. I like a little bit of that in my coffee, not too much. But uh, you can see the oil sitting there on top. And uh, yeah. And that is it. I'll probably put a little bit of heavy cream in here to uh, to help accentuate it, give it that kind of salted caramel flavor I like in my coffee. So the closer it is to a coffee milkshake, the more I'm probably going to like a cup of coffee. But uh, strong, good coffee flavor is important to me first. I can drink coffee black. I just prefer it sweet and light. Um, good equipment is the main thing. Get a good grinder. Spend the money there. Um, and if you like your coffee strong, AeroPress is the way to go in my opinion. You can adjust the strength really easily. Um, you can, uh, uh, you know, mess with different beans. You can get the best out of a bean with this method as far as all the stuff I have tried. So getting the best out of the bean is uh, important to me because I don't buy super expensive beans. And um, this does it for me. So maybe it's not for you. But it is for me. Uh, a lot of people love pour over. But uh, I'll let you know here in a second what I think of these beans. But i got to go finish making my cup of coffee. See you in a second. Okay, so two things. First drink of the new. The bean smells amazing. It smells like toasted pecan or pecan pie. Very nice. Very nice. Mm. Interesting little bit of the grassy notes from a light roast but very much pecan flavor um very how do we man i can't even there's a sweet just i can't quite place this one the the the, the back note the, the front note is very very toasted pecan though very nice um I might mix it with something actually a little bit darker, but uh, very good. Very, this one, yeah. So the Kahawa 1893 Kenyan, um, very, very uh, like it. Very, I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that one again. Um, the other thing, coffee selection knife, always the Orion Solaris. So uh, that's what's... Uh, dominate in the pocket this morning and I'm going to keep it there for this cup of coffee go sit down on the front porch and uh, see what's happening out there in the rainy world today here in Indiana but uh, that's it for now folks uh, I wanted to get y'all some coffee content and kind of show you my setup and show you the general rules of coffee making for me so uh, basically just about three minutes 15 seconds on a new bean uh, 185 degree water forgot to tell you that uh, electric kettle set on 185, a good grinder, and a narrow press and a Prismo. So the next round, uh, if I can find some better lighting and ways to, to set up camera angles, we'll get things on the, uh, on the scales. And I'll show you the exact weights. I'll go through, I'll make like three cups of coffee um, and weigh each one of them, just eyeballing things. So you can get an idea of how I make coffee and the, the, the weights I'm shooting for, give you a range. And uh, that's really how I do it. I don't weigh everything every single day. But uh, generally when I get a new bean, I do. Just so I can see where that bean scales at, at in, my, in my grinder, how high up it comes on the, the little red crossbars there. And um, otherwise I end up with a horribly strong cup of coffee and I will blame it on the beans when it's guess whose fault. So that's it. I'm going to let you all out of here. I'm going to go enjoy my coffee. So hope you all have a great day. And until I see you again, and I do hope I see you again, stay well, be kind, do good, drink good coffee. This is Grumpy, and I'm out.